Howdy folks! Today we're going to be addressing a common question that comes up on my uh, website regarding um, RC battery chargers. I mentioned on my RC battery charging page that you can use these, uh, you know, these multi-chemistry -chem RC chargers uh, for more than just lithium batteries or um, nickel metal hydride or NICAD. Uh, they also have um, lead acid battery um, charge programs in them and how you can use them to uh, charge a vehicle battery. And I do get quite a few questions about that, how you hook them up, uh, charge rates, that type of thing. So uh, we're just gonna be using, as we can see in there, I'm just using one of my eye chargers. This is the 306B, but this would be similar to any of the four button style uh, RC chargers that are out there on the market. Very common, common type of charger. So uh, we'll just zoom in to, uh, to the charger here and we'll go over connectivity and that type of thing and the settings. As far as connectivity goes, as you probably saw, uh, I have my iCharger hooked up to a power supply. Um, to hook it up to your vehicle battery, you're going to need a charge harness. iChargers come with these really simple um, alligator clip uh, charge harnesses. So just a couple of medium sized alligator clips on the one end and then the four millimeter bananas to plug into the charger. If your specific four button charger or RC charger doesn't come with one of these, you'll have to purchase one or build your own. You know, if you wanted to, you could build one with the bigger, you know, battery type post clamps on it, but these little guys work in most cases. Now, as far as hooking it up to the battery, very simple. Most people understand this, no problem. Positive to positive, negative to negative, so black to your ground and red to your positive. I chargers are nice if you get the polarity hooked up backwards, that's negative, um, they'll warn you. You know, they'll scream at you, check the polarity idiot. Not all four button chargers have that level of protection on them though. Uh, the cheaper ones don't, so when in, you know, try to get the polarity right is what I'm getting at. Don't know if the camera caught that, but there was a fairly big spark when I hooked that up. That's just the power caps in the charger powering, uh, charging up. Anyone who's charged bigger lithium packs probably noticed that. So uh, don't get freaked out if you see that spark. Now, the most common question within the questions I get asked is what charge rate you charge these at. Um, unlike a lithium pack that shows the capacity of the battery in milliamp hours or amp hours, most vehicle batteries don't have amp hour ratings on them. Uh, the most common rating you'll see on them is cold cranking amps. That has nothing to do with the capacity of the battery, so that number you can forget about. But there is another number, it's um, reserve capacity, and we can use that number to calculate the amp, hour, or the amp hours. Reserve capacity, what it is, is it's a, uh, a number given in time, in minutes, of how long it would take a fully charged battery to drain down to 10.5 volts with a uh, 25 amp load placed on it. Most vehicle batteries are 12 volt batteries, meaning they have six cells in them. So that 10.5 volts, in case you're curious, equates to roughly 1.75 volts per cell. So that would be the lowest under load um, value that a, a lead acid battery wants to see. Kind of like a, a lithium battery, the lowest under load voltage the cell wants to see is three volts. Reserve capacity. Now, not all batteries will have reserve capacity numbers. I had to look this one up. So what I did is I just looked at the group size uh, for this battery. This is a 51R. So I went online, I looked at a few 51R batteries online on their specifications and all have roughly, you know, 80 to 85% or 80 to 85 minute reserve capacity uh, numbers. So we'll, we'll use 85 for this battery uh, because that's actually what the Costco Kirkland one came up as. And we get our handy dandy calculator out here and Turn her on. So, 85 minutes reserve capacity. Now the number that we're going to use to find amp hours is 2.4. So you divide 85 by 2.4. So 85 divided by 2.4, roughly 35 amp hours. So that's what we're going to use to calculate or figure out our charge current. Okay. 
The other difference with lead acid batteries over lithium or even nickel metal hydride or NICAD is they have very low charge rates, very slow. The safe charge rate on a lead acid battery is 0.1C. About the fastest they recommend is 0.3C. So on, you know, you're not going to get one hour charges with lead acid batteries safely anyways. A fairly fully depleted lead acid battery can take anywhere from 12 to 20 hours to, uh, to fully recharge. So, now that we know our, um, our amp hour rating, let's use our 0.1C charge rate. So, 35 times 0.1 is 3.5 amps. So, that's what we're going to set the charger at. Um, at fast, if we wanted to go to 0.3C um, charge rate, that would be roughly 10 amps. Now, that's a lot of work. Uh, and believe me, I don't do that for every lead acid battery I charge. Generally, if you pick anywhere from 3 to 5 amps, for most vehicle batteries, you're going to be perfectly safe. So if you don't want to mess around with all that calculation, you know, 3 to 5 amps is going to be safe. These chargers also automatically ramp down the current as soon as the voltage comes up. Lead acid batteries charge with the same constant current, constant voltage um, charge method that lithiums do, actually. So they're applied a constant current until the maximum voltage of the cell is achieved, which is on a lead acid battery is around 2.2, 2.3 volts. And then it starts ramping down the current and then applies the constant voltage to give it the flow charge or whatever they call it. So now we'll go into the charger and I'll just show you how to program that. And one other thing about the time selection that you better check on these. Charger programming. So before selecting our battery, uh, I mentioned something about time. So go into your settings and there are two that you should be wary of. Uh, can't remember the name of them offhand. Okay, here's one. Safety timer. Because a lead acid battery can take a long time to charge, the, most of these chargers they default to a two hour safety timer limit so make sure you turn that off um, so safety timer you want off and there's another one is capacity cut off because we don't really know what the capacity is we're we're guesstimating more than anything so again I turn the capacity cut off off again these things will automatically ramp down the current and lead acid batteries they can have a small amount of current being sent to them all the time you know, they're perfectly safe. That's actually when they're happy. So we'll get out of that. We'll go back to uh, our battery type. So the battery type we want to take is lead, lead battery, PB. So enter. Now the charge rate and we'll select that. So now our current. So we determined that was going to be 3.5 amps. And if this was anything other than a 12 volt vehicle battery, this is where you would change that. But so 6S, 6 cells in a 12 volt lead acid battery. It'll come up as 12 volts. And we hit the start. There we go. It's ramping up the current. So it's ramped it up to 3.5 amps already. And we can see the voltage coming up. And what I'll do, we'll, we'll, I'm going to stop the camera, but when this is fully charged, we'll come back. We'll see the time that it actually took and how many uh, milliamps of charge went into this, uh, went into this battery. Came down to the garage expecting this thing to be all finished. <laughs> She's still going. What are we at? Uh, six hours, 40 minutes or so. And it's pumped in over 10,400 milliamp hours, 10.4 amp hours. Uh, so, assuming that we did that calculation right, and this actually is a 35 amp hour uh, lead acid battery, uh, it was fairly depleted. You know, we're at roughly one third the capacity here. Uh, we're at the constant voltage stage of the charge cycle, the topping charge. You'll notice the voltage is holding at a nice 14.4 uh, volts, and that works out to 2.4 volts per cell. I think I said earlier uh, these top out at 2.3. It's completely charger dependent. This charger obviously holds it or tops it out at 2.4 as its uh, constant voltage. 
uh, Purcell and current has dropped way back. Uh, we're sitting at what 0.65 amps, 650 milliamps. We started at 3.5, and again, that is why these chargers are so safe. You know, if you went a little bit higher with the current, it it will drop it back uh, to a safe level. Of course, you still want to stay. You know, keep that 0.1 C uh, number in mind up to 0.3 C. 0.1, you're really safe. So when in doubt, just like any battery chemistry, go with a lower charge rate, uh, better, safer for the battery. I don't expect this to be too much longer, but it's bedtime, so uh, we'll come back tomorrow and see where it's finished up at. Good morning all. Done. Uh, 9 hours 34 minutes, and we pumped, what, 11,000, almost 12,000 milliamp hours into it, 12 amp hours. So. 35 amp hour battery, 12 amp hours, basically one third capacity. We pump back into it. Gonna have to tell the wife not to keep that stereo running when the car is turned off. Uh, one other thing I might mention here, let's see if we can zoom into it. On my lithium uh, LiPo battery uh, page on my website, I talk about how I use internal resistance as a tool to gauge uh, battery condition. And the same way I do it on lithium batteries, I actually do it on our vehicle batteries as well. So when this battery was brand new, I took an internal uh, resistance reading, which is something that some four button uh, RC chargers do, not all again. But if yours does that and you want to try this, um, go for it. Just take an internal resistance reading of the uh, battery and then put that somewhere on the battery or in a log book, wherever. And then you can gauge how that battery is aging in relationship to internal resistance measurements. You know, maybe a year or two years from now, take another reading, see if it's gone up. Yeah, actually, it'd be interesting to see what it is now. So I'll just go over that process really quick. For anyone who wants to stick around for that, we'll go back to our little charger here. So we got to stop this and let's go to special modes. So here at special modes, hit start. First one that comes up is motor drive. Measure internal resistance. Hit the start button. 29. So the IR has actually gone down a little bit from what I recorded on the battery, but there's many reasons for that. Uh, internal resistance is very dependent on the charge of the battery in some respects and the temperature of the battery. The higher the temperature, generally the lower the uh, internal resistance. So if at all possible, kind of take it at the same temperature every time. But, you know, 29, 32, pretty close. For the astute among you, you may have noticed that um, the reading on that charger, I've got the voltmeter hooked up to it now, was over 12.6 volts. A uh, 6 cell lead acid, ba lead acid battery is considered fully charged at 12.6. Now you may be wondering why it's higher than that. Essentially what's going on is there a surface charge on the battery. So it's going to read a little bit higher until there's a, uh, a, you know, a draw on the battery. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to run into the car real quick. We'll turn the headlights on for maybe, you know, a minute or two. And then we'll let the voltage stabilize again. We'll come back and we'll see if this is reading 12.6. So I had the lights on for a couple of minutes, just turned them off, and the voltage is recuperating now. And uh, if this is a healthy battery, we should see it recuperate up to 12.6 volts or even a little bit higher. I'm just showing that just so you're not concerned that, you know, you, you read, well, fully charged 6 cell uh, lead acid battery is fully charged at 12.6, and yet when you're done charging it, you know, it's going to be higher than that when the charge is finished, but that's just because it's got that surface charge on it. And once you drain that off, uh, the battery should stabilize at a nice 12.6, which, which is exactly what it's doing here. See if it goes any higher than 6.1. There, but you can see it's slowing right down. So, yeah, we'll say this is a good, healthy, fully charged pack battery. Cheers, folks. Have a good one.